And so when you're talking about juggling things, you're not juggling anything. You're taking the most important things and shoving them around the edges. And so why is the bulk of your time going to things that are not the most important in your life? Why? And really sit with that. Why am I giving my most important asset, which is my time and energy and effort, into things that I don't value? Is it because of the almighty dollar? Is it because it's what I'm supposed to do? Is it because I've made commitments and I'm afraid to say, hey, no, this no longer serves me. This no longer fits in my life. And you're doing it because you feel like you're kind of pressured into it. And so then the third thing I would do after you look at your calendar is then say, where do I need to put some boundaries? Where do I need to start making time for the things that are most important for me? And where do I need to use the most important sentence that I think anybody can utter, which is no. No is a complete sentence. It does need, not need any explanation. It's just a no. You do not have to handle those the person on the other side, on the receiving side, their emotional burden. They're a grown-ass adult. They can handle it. Hey, it's Logan Renee of the Soulcation Podcast, a place where you will learn how to shape your own success, maximize your unique gifts, maintain your self-love, and so much more when we get back from thanking our sponsors. Are you ready to snatch your permission slip back and take charge of your life? Well, this podcast is sponsored by the number one new release book, Never Ask for Permission Again. Grab your copy today by clicking on the link in the show notes. And now for your Soulcation announcements, we have a live class that we're super excited about for this month. And we're going to be talking about building consistent income, whether it's in your business or real estate or investments. We're going to talk about the truth and the lies around money. We're going to talk about building assets. We're going to talk about having a wealth mindset, the tools that millionaires use, life insurance, real estate 101, investing mistakes, and actual first steps where you can start to not only save money, we're going to talk about tithing and how that's always a return. We're going to cover it all. So you want to make sure that you're there Thursday, May 27th. Where can you find this information? Make sure you're a part of the Soul Cation Tribe Facebook group. We give all the details there. Also, make sure you mark your calendars for the 2021 Soul Cation Retreat. I just want to be the real me. We're going to talk about releasing self-doubt, unpacking brokenness, loving the woman that you truly are, forgiving the woman that you were, having a mindset that's set to be a CEO, that's set to be a leader, that's set to be a woman that runs a podcast, that's set to be um, a woman that has a New York Times bestseller. Who is that woman under the title? That's where we're going to cover. So we'll see you Saturday, August 28th. All of the uh, details are in the show notes as well as on LoganRenee.com. We'll see you there. Hi, ladies. Welcome back to the Soulcation Podcast. I have Erin with me today, an amazing woman, Indiana. Is that yes. somewhere in the middle of the country? So anybody in the middle of the country, holla at Erin if, if you're close by. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about this interview. Erin, welcome to the podcast. Logan, it is so great to be here, girl, to finally meet you in person. I know. Long time prepping and planning for this interview, so I'm happy that yeah. we got our, our calendar synced and ready to go. Yeah, a lot of life happened between when we first scheduled to we're actually here, but we are doing it today. <laughs> we are going to just rock this world. So can you please introduce yourself to the Soulcation audience, to the tribe, let them know who you are? Oh my gosh, I would love to do that. First of all, I have to say I'm a huge fan girl. I am so honored to be here and to be talking to your audience today. I'm Erin Wiseman. I'm a life coach. I'm a family medicine physician. I am a mother of three. Sometimes I call myself mother of dragons. <laughs> I'm a farmer's wife. I will always be an athlete, though I don't look like the same body type that I did after three children, but I will claim that to the day that I die. And I am a total badass. I'll be perfectly honest, but I didn't always know that about myself, especially when I was going through burnout. 
When did you find out that you were a badass? That was, I think I always knew, like, you know, when you're younger and you know, like, there is something great about you, but then the world beats us up Mm -hmm. and we think we need to be different, look different, talk different. So I think that we all know that that like inner creation, that amazingness, that spark of who we really are is in there. But it wasn't until I reignited with that probably around 2015 that I really started to claim that badassery again. That's so good. Okay, so let's talk about the burnout. How and why and when and where were you in your life where that burnout just happened for you? Girl, hindsight's 2020. I had probably been burning out all through my 20s into my 30s. But when, when it hit the fan was 2014. It was supposed to be the best year of my life. I was finishing my family medicine residency. I was going to get my big girl physician paycheck job. I was going to be like out and doing it. And I found myself absolutely numb at that point. I had the kids. I had the dog. I had the husband, the student loans. Shoot, we don't have a white picket fence, but I could have probably had one of those at that point. And I was looking around within weeks of starting this new job. And I was like, oh, my God, this is it. This is everything that I've worked for. Like, this is this is it. And I thought at that moment that I was like something was wrong with me, that I was broken because I had done all the things that they had told us to do as little girls, like get an education, be a high achiever, you know, get the degree. And yet. I, like I said, I felt empty, like that there wasn't that fulfillment. There wasn't the success that I thought that that would be at that point. And that was for me like the bottom of the pit. And I don't think it, people around me knew that at that point, because as a doctor, you're supposed to be the captain of the ship. Like you got to show up for your A game. And I I felt so lonely. Like you mentioned, I'm in Indiana. They're more livestock here than animal or than people. And I was the only female physician in my county. So I got mistaken for the nurse all the time. I got mistaken. Maybe I was like a nurse practitioner. Maybe I was a student. (laughs) I was like, no, I'm Dr. Weissman. And I think that was part of it as well, is that I thought I had done all these things to get that recognition, to get ahead, because I'm the first physician in my family. And yet it it wasn't there. It was empty. What did you feel? when people mistake you as that person. Because, you know, as a woman, getting that title, titles are so important to us. Anyway, wife, mom, doctor. So to have that title just like ripped from you, you know, expecting you to be the nurse, expecting you to be the help, right? How did that make you feel? Oh my gosh. It just like waves of anger, I would say. Like, I'm a fighter by nature. So that's the first emotion a lot of times that I feel, just be like anger. And like, I would want to pop off at people and be like, no, my name is doctor. Like, I earned that type of thing. And and then the next was just kind of like sorrow, almost like sadness, because I was like, well, shit, I'm still not enough. Like, I, even though I had fit myself into the shape that I thought, like, if I wore the right clothes, if I talked the right way, if I got the right education, then they would see my value. They would see my worth. It would be enough. And so, you know, when when people would come in and call me Aaron or not use my professional title, I part of it was sadness because I gave up so much to go through the educational system. And I think that was a big part of my journey of burnout is just realizing that, you know, the saying, like, if you just work harder, it'll all work out. If you just sacrifice a little more, if you just push, like, there's something in the hard that makes it great. (laughs) And what my burnout was really a reckoning with that was like, no, not evidently. Like, what hustle culture the lies that it feeds to us are not evidently true. And that was what was really coming to fruition. Because in that year of 2014, I really found myself waking up and being like, whose life is this? Like, who is this? Like, is this who I want to be? Because I was trying to be super doctor, super mom, super wife, super community leader, all the things. 
until I finally sat back and I was like, Aaron, what do you really want? And the worst part was I didn't even know. All the titles, all the degrees, and that question, always I'm asking the tribe is, what do you really want? What's mm-hmm. not? It doesn't have to sound sexy. It doesn't have to sound perfect, rehearsed. What is it that you really, really want? And a lot of times it's not what we're doing. Now, granted, is every day going to be perfect and rainbows and Skittles? <laughs> but clarity, clarity around your time and your life that you can't get back is, is key. You know, so, okay, for the person that's listening and saying, like, I'm burned out, what would you tell her? I would tell her, friend, you're not broken. Like, this it, this happens. It is okay, and it does not mean that there's anything wrong with you. I'd also tell her that you're not alone. Right now that we know, and, and some of my statistics are medical, but we know somewhere between five out of five to seven out of every ten doctors is walking around in burnout. We know nursing, that's about the same as well. We know in the general population with COVID, it's about closer to eight out of every 10 people are walking around with some symptoms of burnout. So I would say like, nope, everybody else is just playing a fool a little bit better. Like they're not talking about it, but they're going home at night and they're crying Sundays before they have to go into work on Monday mornings and they're dreading getting up and they don't even want to look at their emails to deal with the problems. And yeah, they're on LinkedIn at 2 a.m., looking for new jobs. You are not alone in that. And the third thing I would tell her is like change is absolutely possible. That question that you asked, Logan, like what do you really want is the crux of living your best life, is the crux of living a fulfilled life. And so if you can get really real and strip off all those layers of all the shoulds and all the coulds and all the thoughts that have been shoved in our heads since we were little, little girls, And just say, like, what do I really need and what do I really want now? Not thinking about the past because the woman who decided she was going to go into medicine at 18 is not who she is now at 38. Like, totally different, the scale of things. And so really orientating into the present and being like, what do I need? And what do I truly want going forward? Because I don't have to ask anybody for permission for that. I can have that. Never ask for permission again, ladies. You know the book. (laughs) Yes, yes. So what are some self-care strategies for those who are in burnout right now? They're on LinkedIn at 2 a.m. They, you know, they've literally zoned out. People probably can't even recognize them, right? So what Mm -hmm. do they do for that person? I think the first thing, what you got to do is you got to step up and you got to notice it. And you got to say, okay, raise my hand. Like, that's me. I No more tonight. No more like blaming it on, oh, if I got a little bit more sleep or, oh, if I get a little more vacation or when COVID ends. Like, no, I think you have to notice it right now. And then you've got to name it. For me, it's burnout. You may use a different term, moral injury. You may use compassion fatigue, whatever. I don't care. But you have to put a label with it. And sometimes that's using other people's words. And so then the third thing is, is you have got to normalize. Again, like it's not just me. I am not a special snowflake. Like (laughs) everybody feels like this sometimes and it's absolutely okay. And then you're ready to actually take some action steps and move forward. And the first one I would say, it's always so important. The antidote to burnout is community and connection. You have got to get in community with people. You have got to, even if you're not saying the words, but hearing other people tell their story, it's so vitally important so that then you can be like, oh, okay, I can take those steps forward. And then there's a whole bunch of little micro steps that you can take from there. Let's talk about the messiness, uh, the messy and the miracle of being a mother. But let's talk about the side that is not so perfect. You'll never see on social media. Let's talk about that side of my life. Let's, yeah, absolutely. So my kids are nine, seven, and just turned five. So we're like Verizon, old Verizon. We used to upgrade every two years, but I canceled that contract. We are done. <laughs> With that, I got two boys, one girl. You know, and that was one thing with the messy side of medicine is I didn't have the perfect relationship with my mom. My grandmother was actually more of a mother figure to me. And 
there would be times that they're in burnout and in the worst parts that I would hear my mother like coming out of my mouth and I would be like, <gasps> what is going on? You know, like, cause I said, I would never, I would never be like that. And that's when you either, I found myself either like shirking and like hiding or being like, okay, like this is mom made a mistake and like owning that parts of it. I've also realized too that like, all the Instagram, all the Pinterest momming, like, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. I will just call it out and I will say it. It is bullshit. And so you you get to mom however you want to mom. And that is absolutely okay. And in the early parts of my children's life, Craig, my husband, was a better mother than I was. I'll be perfectly honest. And I used to have a lot of mom guilt about that. I used to have a lot of shame about that. But I, what I realized is like, that's just how we made it work. It's how we made it work. And it was absolutely and totally okay. Our kids are not going to go to juvie because mom wasn't involved in their lives. You know, they're not going to fail second grade because I don't sit down and always do the homework with them. But do they know that they're loved? Are they cared for? And do they feel like they're in a safe, protected space? That's where I define my motherhood. And if if that means that the house is a little messy and we don't always get to school on time, hey, it's okay. We're making, we are, our family is safe, secure, and loved. Good, Aaron. That's good. So are you still in the practice? Are you still a physician and doing your business? I do. Yeah. So I practice 100% on my terms now. So it's however, you know, I want to show up in the world. And that was a big thing for me, kind of bucking the system of like, quote unquote, traditional medicine. I remember like when I did finally make some changes and I transitioned away from that first office, my grandma was like, so are you still a doctor even though you don't have an office? And I was like, yes, they will not take the paper off the wall. Like I'm still a physician, mom or grandma. It's 100% okay. But it's just really realizing that there's a lot of things in the institution of medicine that just really went against who I was as a person. And so I've really had to keep asking that question, like, what do I need and what do I want professionally? And finding those spaces for which I fit in that. Like, I am not a good person when I am on call every night. I need that sleep. And so I just realized, like, okay, if that's the job and that's what it's defined for, then I don't belong there. Unless you're willing to make some accommodations. And at first it was really hard to ask for those things. But now what I realize is absolutely necessary for me to do that. So yeah, I still claim Dr. Wiseman. I still hold active license. I still occasionally see client, see patients and it's awesome. But the biggest thing is, is now I've really transitioned into the entrepreneurial space so that we can talk about burnout. So we can totally normalize the conversation and so that I can help employers, hospitals, and other organizations to say like, time out, you don't need another building. You need to take care of your most important capital, which is your people. Your people are crispy. And so here's a few things that we can do to improve the culture of your work because they don't care if you give them a $5 voucher to the local restaurant. They don't care. Like if you slap down a pizza once a quarter over lunchtime, what they care about is the same thing that I care about my kids. Am I safe here? Am I protected here? And do I feel that sense of professional love? And if any organization can do that, you won't have burned out people. You won't have staff turnover because you're going to meet those needs for them. So how would you tell somebody that's single, that maybe has kids, somebody that's married, maybe has kids, or somebody that just has no children, and she's a woman that has to juggle multiple things, Mm -hmm. how do they make things priorities? Mm, That's so good. So an exercise that I make my clients do, and everybody needs, you need to get a pencil and paper for this, if you haven't already for this interview. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. So the first thing what I want you to do is make a list of like, what are the most important things in your life? You know, family, friends, your health, all those kind of things, like make the list of that. Then I want you to get your good old Google calendar or wherever you keep your, your calendar at. And I want you to find those things that you just put on your list on your calendar. 
And I'm going to bet most people don't have them on there. And so when you're talking about juggling things, you're not juggling anything. You're taking the most important things and shoving them around the edges. And so why is the bulk of your time going to things that are not the most important in your life? Why? And really sit with that. Why am I giving my most important asset, which is my time and energy and effort, into things that I don't value? Is it because of the almighty dollar? Is it because it's what I'm supposed to do? Is it because I've made commitments and I'm afraid to say, hey, no, this no longer serves me. This no longer fits in my life. And you're doing it because you feel like you're kind of pressured into it. And so then the third thing I would do after you look at your calendar is then say, where do I need to put some boundaries? Where do I need to start making time for the things that are most important for me? And where do I need to use the most important sentence that I think anybody can utter, which is no. No is a complete sentence. It does need, not need any explanation. It's just a no. You do not have to handle those the person on the other side, on the receiving side, their emotional burden. They're a grown-ass adult. They can handle it. And so advocating for yourself. I think because we all can like say, oh, we're so busy and like juggle the things. Believe me, you just heard my titles. Physician, mom, I'm a, I have three different businesses that I run. Farmer's wife, it's crazy in the spring and the fall here in Indiana. But here's the thing, like the busy shouldn't define you. You get to define you. You are in control. I got to write it down. I can't leave here without writing it down. The busy should define Say it again one more time for the people in the back, Aaron. I <laughs> love it. The busy should not define you. You get to control. You are in control. But don't, I mean, can't you relate so many times where you feel like you're like a, you are like shackled by the busy, by the schedule, by the, all the commitments? Yeah. I was looking at my, t- I call it to, a, to achieve list and not to do this. And it was 25 things. And I was like, okay, I have a team. So these things can go to them. This I need to just erase because it's dumb. This was making myself seem important. And these are the five things that I really need to do. Boom. Boom. Yeah, here's the D's on that. So you either do it, you delegate it, you delete it, or you schedule it for later. I forget what the D, I, I can't remember. I made something up on that one but but it is it's like it's either you sit down and like ass in seat get it done no more procrastinating you outsource it like i said i will never scrub a toilet again so i outsource house cleaning in my in my house you schedule it for later so do it you know put it purposefully it will get done at that date or you throw it out you say no not at this time not important Good, Aaron. Please tell the tribe where to find you because y'all got to follow Aaron, honey. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, since you're listening to the Soulcation podcast, I would love for you to come over to my podcast. It's called Burnt Out to Badass. It's where I take stories of other women and we're talking about burnout and talking like getting into the dark night of the soul and really walking their journey through so that other women can see like it doesn't stay here. Like you can move forward and then showing all the different avenues, all the different ways that um, thousands of other women have done this as well. The website's the same thing, Burnt Out to Badass. I really like hanging out on Instagram and LinkedIn. So you can find me personally in those places. You can go find me in other spots, but you're going to talk to one of my team members. But if you really want to talk to me, it's Erin Wiseman Dio on LinkedIn. Dropping bars today. Thank you so much, Erin. That was everything. everything. Well, Logan, I am so glad for the invitation to come and talk. And like I said, I actually just went and bought one of your t-shirts in dark gray. So I'm going to post that when it comes in the mail. Woo-hoo. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see you, Erin. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All the love, girl. <laughs> All right, make sure you all share this episode with your closest, closest friend, especially if she's been experiencing burnout. And I'll catch you on the next episode of the Soul Kitchen Podcast. My hope is that your soul just went on a vacay and you have tools that you can apply to your life today. For more in-depth tools, head on over to LoganRenee.com. 
Also, if you have questions that weren't answered on this episode, email your questions to logan at loganrene.com and I'll answer them here on the show. I'll talk to you soon.